DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. If you want to walk away with more money at the end of your case, choose Jacoby & Myers at the start of your case. At Jacoby & Myers, we get our clients up to 10 times the original insurance offer. Choose Jacoby & Myers. This is Eyewitness News with live breaking news. Breaking news now at 6.30 in a story you will only see right here on Eyewitness News. This could be historic. Yeah, for the city of L.A., a woman is expected to be nominated to lead the L.A. City Fire Department with the current chief expected to announce his retirement. Eyewitness News reporter Mark Cotorobles is live with a new reaction within the past half hour. Mark, what's the latest? Yeah, Leslie Brandy, good morning. We are just learning this morning that L.A. City Fire Chief Ralph Terrazas will be retiring after nearly 40 years of service. And already this morning, uh, news that his replacement is set to be announced by Mayor Eric Garcetti and Council President Nuri Martinez. And we know who it is. Kristen Crowley will be nominated as the department's next chief, a top deputy with more than two decades of experience with L.A. City Fire. She is currently the acting administrative operations chief deputy and fire marshal. If confirmed, she will be the 19th fire chief and the first ever woman to lead the LAFD. In a just released statement, Mayor Eric Garcetti says, we're living through an unprecedented moment that has called on our fire department not just to protect us, but to lead us in the fight to overcome public safety challenges we've never faced before. At the same time, the LAFD is leading a transformative national discussion about strengthening equity and inclusion within the firefighting ranks, and we must overcome those internal challenges too. And Nuri Martinez, LA City Council President, saying, this announcement is not just important for the city of Los Angeles, but for girls across LA who never imagined they could one day serve as chief of the Los Angeles City Fire Department. Yeah, now, Chief Terrazas, who was sworn in back in 2014, was the first Latino to serve in this role. In 2015, he reorganized the department into four bureaus, the first restructuring of the LAFD in 50 years. He also led to a hiring surge of the current sworn force. More than half were hired within the last eight years, with diversity being a top priority. Now, his retirement and the nomination of Kristen Crowley, it will be made official at a 9 a.m. news conference here at the Frank Hodgkin Memorial Training Center in Elysian Park. Reporting live here with the very latest, Mark Cotarobles, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. We'll send it back to you. Significant on so many fronts, Mark. Okay, thank you so much for that. Good morning to you. I'm Brandi Hitt. And I'm Leslie Sykes. Brianna Ruffalo's in for Leslie Lopez. She's got the forecast live. Mega Doppler 7000 HD behind you. All of that green, Brianna. When's it going away? Yeah, uh, soon. So today, <laughs> we're still seeing some leftover showers. Most of it is uh, sprinkles, if you will. As you head out into the mountains, the foothill communities, we're still seeing some. Couple spotty areas. If you can put them on pause for you, so you can see very isolated spots still seeing and possibly some sprinkles into areas of Orange County as well. And some snow flurries up in the mountain communities. So this afternoon, we're going to be drying out. We're going to see some partly sunny to partly cloudy skies. So a little more sunshine out there today. And then we're back to being in a drying trend. So we're going to be in the mid 60s today. Still going to be cool downtown LA, Orange County and the Inland Empire and Valley. So you want to keep your little sweater with you. Beach communities at about 62. Mountains, 45 degrees. Chance of a shower there through the afternoon today. And then for the high desert will be in the low 60s with plenty of sunshine for the Antelope Valley. We do have much warmer weather though. It is on the horizon. We'll let you know when and just how much warmer it's going to be getting this week. That's coming up in just a bit. For now, Scott Rice above South LA with a look at your commute. Hey, Scott. Hey, Brianna, good morning. Good morning, everyone. You know, it hasn't been horrible this morning. We're seeing the normal patterns for slow traffic. We're in South L.A. Show you the 110 freeway at Florence, and that's really where the harbor northbound starts to load up. Southbound's not bad, but pretty typical for this time of the morning for the 110 north to be kind of busy up towards downtown L.A. We'll flash up Sky Map 7 and show you where Florence is and how it all sort of lays out here. But the northbound drive, just a little sluggish. We want to go to one accident that popped up on the map here in the Cajon Pass. I-15 southbound at the 138. It's a multi-car crash, and the center lane or lanes is blocked, and it doesn't take much to back up the I-15 south. Quite a lot of folks traveling, uh, coming southbound through that area. Uh, it looks like you're going to have to plan on that and give yourself some extra time. Back to both of you in the studio. Yeah, that looks pretty ugly out there, Scott. Thank you so much for the heads up. And also breaking this morning, we have some new video that shows one of at least three armed convenience store robberies in L.A. County overnight, and investigators think these crimes are connected. Take a look. This is video from one of the robberies 
robberies in Bellflower. That's where one of the robbers threatened the cashier there with the gun before they took off with the money. Similar robberies were reported in Lakewood and in Paramount. Luckily, nobody was hurt. And we're learning more about the three teenagers who died in that violent crash in Pasadena over the weekend. 16-year-old Eric Gullickson and 17-year-old Nicholas Torres were passengers in the Honda. 17-year-old An Anden Bay was driving and he would have turned 18 this week. Investigators say that the trio was headed south on Michelinda near the 210 freeway. This was on Sunday when Bay suddenly lost control. The car then hit the curb and the embankment and rolled over. Two boys died at the scene and the third died at the hospital. Last night, loved ones gathered at the crash site to remember them. He was loyal. He was there for me whenever I needed him. Always. He gave the best advice. He was the best at anything he tried to do. It's not clear whether alcohol or speed was a factor. The crash is still under investigation. There are vigils also planned tomorrow for the L.A. County USC Medical Center nurse who was attacked at a downtown L.A. bus stop. Sandra Shells passed away on Sunday. She was on her way to work last Thursday when investigators say she was struck by a homeless man and fell to the ground. The hospital says that she will be remembered for her compassionate care and dedication to her patients. Shells had worked there for 38 years. Sandy was just a very hard worker, very private person, stayed to herself, but she was always working.